hopefully this is all just going to work. I haven't tested at Cubase yet, but we'll get to that at the end. Um, so how many people have used Convolution before at all for, like, for Reverb? And have any of you used Convolution for anything other than Reverb, anything like sort of more creative effects? OK, cool, a few people. So hopefully there will be some people learning something new. Um, but yeah, so basically, what is Convolution? Um, maybe you've used Convolution as, a, as an effect before, as a reverb plugin, but maybe you're not too sure exactly how it works, just sort of know that it's for, for capturing the sound of a space. Um, but it can be a lot more than that. Uh, as, a, as a sort of a basic thing, Convolution is sort of like a complex filter. And you can see in the diagram that it's sort of a visual representation of what's happening to um, a digital signal. Um, you know, that could, that could be audio. I mean, not really, but the same sort of idea applies um, where you're taking these two signals and you're applying each um, sample uh, of an input signal with each sample of an, of an impulse response. Um, so I'll chat a bit about the, the capabilities and limitations of, um, of convolution because there's a lot of things that you can't do, but there's some things that it's, it's really great for, for doing, especially for uh, helping your workflow. And as Andrew was saying earlier about, um, about you know, being conscientious of price and stuff, um, pretty much every DAW that I've used has come with its own uh, Convolution Reverb plugin. Uh, you get ones that you can download for free as well. Um, the impulse responses you can capture if you have, even if it's, you have a cell phone really, but if you have any kind of recording equipment, you can capture your own ones quite simply. And there's loads online. There's honestly such a huge wealth that you may not even need to really be capturing your own um, in the real world. So Convolution... Uh, fundamentally, like I said, is a filter. So it captures spectral information, um, and it's going to filter those two things together. Uh, one thing to be aware of is the, the input and the output signal, obviously, and, um, and how the convolution is affecting that. So uh, Audio Eases Ultiverb, which is quite a popular convolution plugin, uh, explains this quite well, where they say, um, obviously, you have sources like voice and piano have a pink distribution of frequencies, so they have a quite a, a sharp roll-off at, at the high frequency. So if you try and uh, con convolve a voice with a piano, it's going to give you pretty bad results um, unless you uh, apply some kind of filtering to the voice or the piano where you bring up the, the high-end frequencies and you balance them out a bit. Um, and, they say, and they make a comparison with, with light filters saying that it's kind of similar to combining a blue and a red a translucent filter to create purple. It does become purple but also it's a bit dark as you can see in the picture. It's, it's the same sort of concept applies in, in audio. Uh, so it's just something to be aware of. Um, so it's really great for capturing resonant spaces and, and objects. And uh, here's a list of a few of the things that you can, you can do quite well with, um, with convolution. So rooms, obviously, if anybody's used convolution, that's, that's generally the main one. Uh, guitar cabs, um, a lot of software that has sort of amp modeling will actually have convolution sort of as part of their, their package. And um, you can easily capture your own, your own uh, impulse responses, which we'll go through a bit later. But it's a really great way to, to color your sound. Um, instruments as well. So if you do any sort of physical modeling or if you're using um, sort of subtractive synthesis or anything like that, you've got a, just a really kind of nasty raw sound. Um, you can quickly give it lots of color. And you can, for example, if you had a, a sort of a string-esque sounding instrument, you wanted to send it through a guitar body, um, you know, it could add a lot of character to the sound, which is really great. Uh, radios, old speakers, anything that sort of really makes a sound. Um, it's, it's really good in this one for, for doing uh, video games. I know Wise and FMI both have their own convolution plugins. So if you have an impulse of a speaker and you, have, uh, you want to have some diegetic music, but you don't want to necessarily filter or you know, have duplicates of your audio, maybe there's various situations where the audio might change, um, you, can, you can send it through those. And pretty much anything else, really, pipes, springs, uh, ambience. I'll show a few worked examples at the end. Um, one thing maybe people don't know about, um, which I kind of also came across, is that it's really good for capturing stereo differences. So you can capture binaural if you're um, lucky enough to have access to an anechoic chamber. You can capture your own um, impulse response of your own head, and then if you can filter your audio through that, it'll sound as though um, you know the sound is coming out from in, in a binaural sense. Um, and it also captures spatialization and delay effects. So it's something that's quite cool, and also something that's just worth bearing in mind um, if you have any source audio that's stereo sometimes it can create a sense of space despite the fact that it's not a spatial sound that you're um, filtering it through. So it could just be some noise or like a synthesizer and it can have this weird effect where it's kind of pushing it away from the stereo field. Um, and it may be just as simple as switching the, the stereo signal to a mono signal. Some plugins allow you to do that uh, on the fly. Um, sometimes you'll need to have two separate files. Uh, and yes, worth keeping in mind. And then also just snapshots. Um, so I'll go a bit more into the limitations of this in the next section. But um, one thing you can do is if you have any uh, analog reverbs, you can capture those, um, like sort of a snapshot in time of it, um, EQs and things like that. Um, pretty much anything, really. But again, we'll go into the limitations now. So 
convolution is relatively static. It won't capture randomness. It won't capture um, the diffuse sound of a room. It's only going to be sort of that sound you know, in that moment, um, which might not give you very good musical results. It's really great for post-production. Um, if you've got any sort of um, like ADR where you've recorded the, the vocals later, you can put that in. Um, there are, there's some research being done at the moment, I've seen fairly recently, where they're trying to create a hybrid system, but, so hopefully we'll see that in the next few years, um, something that allows you to capture the space but then still have the, the random element. Um, it's dynamically limited, so it won't change the harmonic content um, you know, in real time, whereas an analog outboard compressor, when you drive the signal a bit harder, it might give you some nice, nice distortion. Um, if you drive the input signal, you're probably just going to get clipping, so not the nice kind of distortion. Um, it's also really bad at picking up resonant peaks. So if you have, um, again, if, uh, an impulse response or even your, your source audio and they, they um, have a peak in the same point, uh, because it's a, essentially a process of multiplication, you're going to get something that's uh, twice as loud and usually is not going to give you very good results. I know a few plugins will allow you to, to dip that out. So if, if it's um, particular to the, to the impulse response, um, you can just dip that out. Or again, in post-production, once you're actually filtering these things, um, you, can, you can take care of that. And it can also lead to spectral mud, much like um, using any reverb, really. If you're not careful, it can just end up making things quite, uh, quite horrible. So how would we go about capturing an impulse response? Um, obviously, I said there's, there's online, there's loads of impulses that you can use just straight off the bat. But if you have a guitar cabinet that you want to sample or a specific room, um, there's a few ways you can go about doing that. Uh, the first is the transient recording method, which is pretty much the easiest way to go about doing it, popping a balloon, clapping your hands in some sort of uh, reverberant space. Um, ideally, the, the source audio needs to be uh, broadband, so a hand clap is not generally good if you want to capture a, a good sound of a space. Um, it can be used in a pinch to, to capture maybe sort of a dirtier sound. Um, but a popping, popping a balloon is quite good. It's quite a loud sound source. That's also important, is to get a good signal-to-noise ratio. You want your source to be quite loud, ideally. Um, so a balloon works well for that, but obviously a balloon has got, as with any kind of object that you're going to be clapping or, or snapping, it's going to have its own uh, frequency response, and that will be picked up by the, by the impulse. Um, and yeah, so it captures the frequency of the mic, the object, and um, the speaker, or the sort of the, if you're playing um, sound out of a speaker, whatever it is, the, the thing that's making the sound. And each of those things is going to have their own, um, their own frequency content, and that's going to impact the sound. So it's just keep worth keeping in mind. And then for uh, digital, any kind of digital systems, so if you're connecting anything, uh, ADAT outboard, or just internally, if you want to capture a snapshot of um, any kind of reverb, maybe at, at uni there's some sort of uh, reverb that you want to capture, you can use a spike, which is essentially just a single sample worth of audio that captures, it's got maximum amplitude and infinite frequencies. Obviously, this only works uh, theoretically and in a digital world because um, you know, a speaker can't reproduce that in an instance. So it's only useful for capturing digital uh, gear, but it's, you know, it's instantaneous, really. Whereas um, if you were doing the next method, um, which is a white noise sweep, this takes a bit of time. But this is the most general. This one is really great for capturing pretty much everything. Um, there's a few things to wor uh, worth keeping in mind. So it's a lower signal to noise ratio, and this is based on the length of the sweep. So um, the longer the sweep, the more kind of noises and intrusions that happen in that space, that's all going to be kind of filtered out once you do the deconvolution process, um, which I'll, I'll get to. Um, so it's just something that you should, you should be wary of. Um, you, it's not usually such a big issue, but if you're recording maybe an impulse of a factory or something, that might be something to, to keep in mind. Um, there's, some, there's some good uh, guidelines for this um, on the Altiverb website. So even though um, Altiverb's uh, the convolution reverb is about 500 quid. Uh, I don't own it. <laughs> it's quite it's quite expensive. They do have some really good information on there, um, specifically uh, with regards to um, capturing spaces, and they also have access to the <coughs> the impulses that you can or the um, sine waves that you can use that you can sweep. Um, so they give you a good list of different lengths and things like that. And so the thing worth keeping in mind about theirs is they don't have equal loudness. As something that they um, they claim to be quite proud of is that it. Um, won't distort your speaker. Most um, systems that will allow you to do it, like uh, Space Designer in Logic, it's got a really great system for capturing it quite easily. It'll do that most of the work for you. Um, it, I think theirs is just a straight sort of flat um, equal equal loudness uh, frequency um, frequency sweep. Whereas with uh, Altiverb, they try to tailor it so it, it puts um, the minimum amount of sort of pressure for the speaker to be to become overloaded. Um, it's also got starting clicks, so they make a little bleep at the, end, uh, the beginning and the end, um, which is great for 
time aligning. So if you're doing, if you're taking a portable recorder and you're capturing a space, you'll have to manually time align it, and that's really useful because if you're capturing a sine wave sweep, it's possible that either your microphone or your speaker can't reproduce or um, pick up the frequencies, you know, within a certain threshold. So um, it's really good to have any sort of connection. You can do it yourself, um, but there's this free to access. So I just suggest using theirs really. Um, the reason why they have the clicks in their software is it also contains information about the um, sample rate and things like that and the length of the, the sweep. Um, but you could just use it just literally as a, as a sort of click to guide you. And yeah, and again, so the different lengths. Um, also, longer sweeps will allow you to capture longer reverbs, um, which is information you can access on their site. And it's also useful for capturing analog gear. So much like the click in the digital world, the sweep is um, great for capturing uh, any sort of analog outboard or just any space. Um, I don't want to make a whole heading for this, but really any waveform file um, is, is fair game for convolution as long as it's not too long. Um, I think some convolution plugins will actually limit you in terms of either time or the actual size of the, the filter, but you can get away with uh, using a lot, even if it's not a click, you know, just like a, a snap, which is what most of the impulse responses will be. Um, and that's kind of what I'll get to in my demonstration. So hopefully I can just switch these over and it should work. So I've just done this in Cubase, um, but yeah, you can really do this um, in any kind of piece of software. Again, um, the actual uh, the convolution software is available in there's loads of free ones, and like I've said, I think Reap has got their own one. Um, Cubase, obviously, um, Logic's one is really good. If you can capture ones with that as well. So the first thing I've got is uh, some rhythmic convolution inspired by Diego Stacco. I've just got three simple drums here, a kick, snare, and a hi-hat, and they're playing a fairly simple rhythm. If we go to an overtime mix view, you'll see that these three channels are sending different amounts to our four auxiliary channels, and each of these auxiliary channels have a convolution plugin set up with different impulses loaded. On the first track, we've got a rhythmic ensemble impulse, Next one's the sort of textual delay. And we've got an interesting stereo effect which creates a sort of ping pong delay. And finally one which pushes the bass a bit. We unsolo all of these now. You can hear how the feel of the drum changes entirely. And finally we've got a convolution like we set up on our master bus with a low high speed loaded. And this is an interesting effect that you can use in diegetic uh, music or sounds. It's another interesting sound design effect that you can do with convolution. And over here we've got another uh, project set up. This one's focused on guitars and shaping the tone of a sound. We've got a very raw DI recording of a guitar. So it sounds all right, but we want to add a bit of drive to it. So I've got a guitar rig here, and the first thing I'll do is add some distortion. It sounds a bit better, but it's still quite harsh and uh, it's quite raw. So I've got two convolution plugins set up here uh, with the same amp and speaker, but with different microphones and positions. And then I've sent them down to a mix over here, which is going to allow me to crossfade between the two choices. As you can hear, that's a much more convincing distorted guitar sound. Uh, the benefits of doing this is that you have no amp noise. Um, you can record or play late at night and still get some, some good results uh, through your headphones. And if you go online, you'll have access to many different types of speakers and amp choices, which is a great way to experiment if you're on a budget. And finally, I've got uh, another convolution plugin set up here with an analog delay. Um, if you listen to that, it's got a bit of a kind of dub delay sound to it. Out. And one of the cool things we can do with Reflector is we can synchronize the impulse to the tempo of the track. And that 
can create an interesting call and response type effect. And there's all sorts of things you can do, really. You can play around. These are just two different um, uh, plugins that I've used. So this is obviously Reflector built, inside, uh, built into Guitar Rig and um, Cubase's own. Um, each different convolution plugin will have its own kind of parameters you can play around with depending on what it's trying to achieve. So, you know, not only can you have fun with uh, the impulses, you can have fun messing around with different convolution uh, plugins and just seeing, you know, what they do. And um, yeah, so that's, that's basically it. I'm sort of ready for questions if, uh, yeah, that's kind of my demonstration. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks. Okay, so we've got time for a couple of quick questions. Yeah.